meeting has started. Olivia, your meeting. Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, we have a few incident to report, so we definitely have topic to talk today. Um, so first, let me share the notes uh, for today. As last week, we are going to use um, ACMD. So here are the news. If you cannot edit the news, feel free to request access. Um, but yeah, so let's let's start. Um, the first thing that I want to talk is the incident that happened yesterday with get.jenkins.io. So as a reminder, get.jenkins.io is a mirror engine that redirects every request um, to download an artifact from the Jenkins to a mirror um, located, um, I mean, to the closest mirror. Uh, from your location, which means that from, I mean, from Europe, you're redirected from to Europe mirrors and so on. Um, what happened um, around six, uh, around 4 p.m., uh, around, sorry, around 5, 5 p.m. UTC, for some reason, um, the um, network storage, so the Azure file storage mounted into that mirror bit service, uh, stop responding. Uh, we got error saying uh, quota exceeded. And so because we could not um, communicate with the network file storage, um, basically mirror bits had no idea about which file can be distributed, can be distributed to which mirror. Um, so that's basically what happened. Um, so the fallback, so the current the fallback, the way it was configured is if that get the Jenkins that I was not rela was not working, it fall back to a service that was using the same network file storage. So basically, we just sent way too much requests to the to the Azure file storage, was which was um, problematic at the time. So it took us around two hours two, three hours to um, understand the issue. The good thing is um, that was the same issue that affected us um, in back in November, 2020. So we had a rough idea of what to do, where to look at. Um, several people were involved in that out outage. So the, the, the first step was to redirect the traffic to a node machine um, that we named package.jenkins.io, which has every file. So the, that machine has the same content that what is located on the Azure file storage. So the idea was just to redirect the traffic to a different machine. So we could put back that we could put that service back on track until we understand what happened. Um, so the service was done. Yeah. So yesterday evening, um, Europe time, everything was fine. Yes, sorry. So the, the redirect was that redirect of get.jenkins.io traffic. So it was, yes. it was a, a DNS change to switch from yeah, exactly. Oh. So we, we, we didn't fix the, 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 the get the Jenkins area. We just redirected traffic to a location that was working. Uh, the, temporary, the temporary solution was fine, but that machine is not able to handle the loads that happened during peak hours. So it's, it was definitely just a, a, a temporary solution um, until, uh, until we, we understand what, what, what's that, what was happening. So on my side, what I did yesterday was to open a portion um, can, uh, to open a connection uh, using PowerShell with the Azure account to list the every open open file connection uh, with the that Azure file storage, and there is a hard limit to two thousand. Um, and what I identify is there was one session in one session we almost filled that uh, limit, so we opened like um, one thousand nine hundred ninety eight connection. Um, around, I'm not sure, Damien, because we 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 investigated with Damien this afternoon, around 4 p.m. I think UTC. Uh, yes, 4 p.m. UTC. It's when we started to see the first peaks. And so uh, once once the the Azure file storage was not working correctly, then you, we saw a lot of side issues like um, CPU usage went crazy inside the nodes, um, memory increased. Obviously, because the service was not able to, to answer requests, the number of requests increased as well. So, I mean, we, we can clearly identify huge peaks 
that happened during that time. Um, until now, we we could not identify the root cause of. Um, I mean, who basically opened those uh, files? Um, was it an issue on Azure? Was it an issue on our side? Did we have one process that just opened every connection in one time? Um, yeah, this is not something that we could identify right now. We have identified an, a private IP, but we are missing some observability data to be able to know because the IP is one of the Kubernetes nodes and we don't know. Um, we, we are missing information to conclude, did we cause the Azure file system issue by making too much requests or was it an Azure issue that caused the request to pile and to go on race condition on whatever application and keeping the file on the open. And this we cannot conclude on one or the other and we miss data to be able to conclude. So that, yeah, that was the, the, the main issue. Any question on this? No. So, so if while we are still uh, on that specific issue, I think what was really nice um, to notice um, based on our learn learning back in November, first we put in place um, a status page in November so we could communicate about this issue and people were able to quickly open uh, the incident on the Jenkins infra slash status git repository. So we were able to communicate about the incident when it starts, when it closed. That was the first thing, first thing, sorry. Um, some people ask why um, the monitoring and the status page did not show that get.jenkins.io was down. Um, the root cause of that is because the way the container is working, um, the service starts and read in a directory. So read the Neto the Azure file storage content into a directory. So the service was working, but could not read the data in a specific directory. So our yield check, because we only monitor the root, so get the check in ZIO, um, our yield check told us that the service was up and running, but when we try to access a specific file, um, obviously that was not working. So that was the thing. So we have to improve our monitoring to monitor a specific file, let's say slash time, slash a Jenkins or whatever file we monitor. Um, ideally, that file needs to be small so we don't put pressure on the network, but um, we have to improve the monitoring. Something that we saw um, in November and we saw the same pattern this time was um, some requests were passing and others not. So we were able to download some specific files, but other were returning five or three errors. In, no in November, we had the same issue where we could access every file except those under the directory plugins. Um, I, I didn't understand why at that time the problem resolved by itself. And we saw the same issue yesterday. Some requests were passing, others not. Get the Jenkins.io was up and running, but um, so yeah, that's that's the that's one of the things. Um, so so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. What, what we do is we'll just improve the monitoring to, to monitor a specific file, but this will just reduce um, to, I mean, this will, will just help us to, to detect the issue. But um, in this case, we, we didn't get the monitoring notification. The second thing that we monitor that we check was since now a while, we monitor that we can download the latest Jenkins version from um, package at Jenkins.io. So we have a monitoring check for that. And how it works, we query repo the Jenkins .org, uh, to see what's the latest version for the weekly in the, 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 the LTS. We relieve the retrieve that version and then we query get the Jenkins.io. If um, the that check is failing for 30 minutes, um, then it triggers an alert and then we are notified by page team. What happened here is because the service was not failing uh, for two, uh, two hours, some requests were passing and others not. So when we look at the Datadog dashboard, we clearly see that half of the requests was, were working and the others not. So that's why we didn't get notified by the monitoring. Um, so well, we, we, we had a look to multiple things here, um, but 
we we could not really i mean yeah that was that was a tough issue to detect so what i have to another thing that we have to improve here um I, I clean up the, the open connection. So I just had to, to connect with the Azure console and um, run a bunch of commands. Obviously, in my case, that was easy because I, the, the command that I run back in November was still in my PowerShell history. So I just um, re-execute the same commands. Um, but I should put the documentation in a run book. So the next time, if it happens again, someone else can um, do the same. So um, this is something that we work with Damien to be sure that someone else can run the same command again in the future. But yeah, any question? So if you have, yeah, I just put um, here the, um, some, the, the kind of access that are done on that network storage, just for to give you an, an ID. Um, while you can mount the same network, the same Azure file storage into multiple containers, you can write from multiple containers, you can read from multiple, multiple containers, you still have a limit on the number of open files you can have at the same time. And just to give you an idea, we have monitoring check that tests um, if you can um, access some specific location on the container. You have um, the Apache, who have an Apache that, that, that can return content. We have mirror bits, which scan on a regular basis from every containers. Um, we have yeah, data dog monitoring. We have so that it's really difficult to uh, to really have to have an, uh, a clear understanding of where the, those um, access those file um, access came from. Um, but yeah, we are still investigating. Um, the next topic that I want to mention. The next outage, I mean, that was not really an outage. Um, so any question before we move on? No. Um, another issue that happened last week. So we wanted to improve the way we deliver Jenkins at your website um, by directly to, to only rely on ham charts. Um, and we face an interesting challenge here. We put branch protection on the Git repository that contains Jenkins.io websites. Uh, so we put branch protection, so we always use pull, pull requests um, to introduce change. And because the new workflow implies committing to the branch, um, we could not identify a way to say, we want to keep the branch protection, but only allow a specific bot to modify that specific file. Um, so we, we, we had, we had a bunch of discussion here, and I'm really open to suggestion. One of them was to just remove the branch protection. So now we just allow uh, the right person to directly commit to master. Um, or there were also suggestions about keeping the branch protection, but automatically open a pull request and automatically close that pull request. So at, since uh, I'm, I have a proposal here because um, there, are, there, there were at least six different way of implementing that workflow based on changing some bits, connecting, automating. This means that we don't have a consensus right now. So that could be a nice ground to start writing an EAP, which is the same thing as the GAP. It's something we haven't done since a long time. So infrastructure enhancement proposal, where the goal will be to state the goals, list the solution with each pro and cons, and then discuss based on that, just to be sure that everything is clear for everyone and have a specific meeting and decision. And then we can jump to implementation because it appears that, that the two tries at implementing it were missing a tiny parts where we discover that maybe we have to, to go in a consensus or to act somewhere. So that's my proposal here, that we, we start a specific discussion with a written process first, where we list the solution, just to avoid a, a risk of a meeting where we might not understand or see all the parts. What do I, you think? I, I, I would be really happy to, to work on that hit document um, because four years ago, I work on the same for the current implementation and the current way to deploy Jenkins LA websites. And I mean, every other website like Javadoc and, and plugins and so on. And, 
in four years, a lot of things evolve. Um, so yeah, I would be really glad to to reevaluate my assumption that we are done four years ago to yeah, propose something different. It was mentioned that maybe IOP could be merged into the GEP. Uh, I here I don't really care. The goal is that we get started on writing the proposal there. And if we see that we can do that exercise as a community team for one or two important topics, then we can raise the discussion of should we go to GP? But the goal is to learn to work before running here. So that that's the goal of the proposal of staying on the IOP that hasn't been updated since uh, a lot of time. So let's see how we behave as a community team. And then we, we can then see if we have to merge to GEP where uh, I would say the writers and readers of GEP are more at ease with that process than we are today. That sounds a good idea. And I would even go one step further um, since we are um, working again on documentation Git repository to put a lot of documentation. I'm just wondering if we could just put the e document there as well. So we'll just regroup that the e document, the meeting notes, um, outage, maintenance, and document, and so on in one location. Olivia, I'm not sure I understood the last thing that you said. Could you, so the idea was place the IEP in a in a different location than the than the earlier IEP repository. Keep yeah, it close to the okay. The, so so right now um, we have so we have a Git repository named documentation that was created a long time ago, and the idea was to have a public documentation uh, where we document everything related to infrastructure. Last week we had a discussion in this meeting about should we put Acme documents in Jenkins LA website or in a different location. Um, we agreed that we would push in a different Git repository, which is the documentation. And so since we we, we, we collect the, the note for the meetings and the upgrade plan and every other things, including one books, I was just suggesting to move the heap uh, documents in the, same doc in the same Git repository. So we just have a bigger repository with more content. That sounds great to me. Okay, thanks for the clarity. So I'm going to move to Jenkins infra slash documentation. Sounds good. Um, those were the two most important uh, topic that I wanted to talk today. Um, Damien, you were mentioning that you wanted to bring the WebSocket topic and the issues we have with release.ci in front.ci, so I guess that's the right time. Yep, so as I mentioned before the recording, so mentioning it for everyone. Um, yesterday during the incident, while uh, we were uh, investigating the Azure console uh, elements, uh, we saw an alert on the Kubernetes, which was uh, not, which was only a warning when we run the diagnostic and troubleshoot integrated on the Azure uh, UI. And that, uh, that warning was about the fact that the um, uh, Kubernetes control plane of our IKS cluster named public gates is threshold. Uh, that means that we are making too much request at some times. So the, uh, the no, I'm having a, a bad moment with language. Uh, I'm not sure threshold is the correct word. It's throttled. That's with a T. So it, we are throttled. So that means that some of our requests are queued before being sent to avoid uh, um, having peak of low, uh, big workload on the API control plane. And this request come from different sources, mostly all our uh, Elm file process, which takes care of doing the GitOps operation to the Kubernetes cluster, but also from all the Jenkins instances that are spawning pods. Because when a pipeline is running inside a pod template, it, it run WebSocket command from a Kubernetes client inside Jenkins to run the kubectl exec command in charge of the pipeline steps SH or B80, depending on Linux or Windows. So these requests are also 
been uh, being sent directly to the Kubernetes API control plane. So we don't know who the culprit is, but this would explain the WebSocket issue we see because WebSocket not only is used between Jenkins and its agents, but also between Jenkins and container that are not the default GNLP uh, container on a given pod when the pipeline is run. For each SH, there is a kubectl exec which involves one WebSocket. And most of the errors we saw were mostly related to this and are correlated in time with the peaks. So we will have to push this further, maybe monitoring the amount of requests or the peak of builds. I don't know which direction to go from there. That's also something we saw yesterday and that's all. I don't want to have, we need more data to prove that it's related to that. What do, do we get, what monitoring can we get out of Azure? Can we, are we able to see when we're exceeding the thresholds or the quotas? Um, like that. Yeah, there, there, is some, there is some monitoring currently uh, integrated in Azure. So mm -hmm. we could maybe start with, the, with this point. Um, I don't know Sorry. how to extract that information continuously from Jenkins though. Um, there's, there are ways to have a groovy script to run that will print uh, instantaneous usage of the current open connection from Jenkins. However, I saw on the graphs, uh, it looks like that Azure is able to determine the uh, user agent of each request because I saw some requests that were coming from my own web browser with the operating system, the web browser and the kind of client. So maybe that one could help because I suppose the user agent of the Kubernetes client in Jenkins is different than a web browser or a M file apply from a Golang. What, what would be also nice is to identify all the potential limits um, that we have to use AKS um, yep. because that's a common issue in Azure. Whatever the service you use, you have limits um, like the number of computer, the number of CPU you can deploy in one region and stuff like that the number of files you can open on the Azure file storage at the same time and so maybe we have a limit that I mean that we need to identify and also that could be worth it to check with Jenkins and Jenkins 6 communities and maybe a Jenkins user or any variation because I'm sure we are not alone I mean we don't make a, so much request. So is it because our Azure IKS is uh, meeting some issues? Is it because of the Kubernetes version? Do we have other user with the same issues on other Kubernetes kind cluster? Because I mean, it's not uncommon. And I, I, we don't do anything uh, that is exotic. We run pipelines on pods and the pod template might have two or sometimes three containers. That's not a lot. So even though there are technical limitations, that's also a subject uh, from the user uh, experience in Jenkins when using the Kubernetes plugin. Yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering whether, so I know on, on Jenkins X, there's a recommendation to turn down Kubernetes external secrets from polling, because that can be quite heavy in terms of listing secrets and looking for changes. But I don't think we're running that on that on that intro cluster. Um, my, my, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing um, that it's probably Helm file related. The fact that the fact that we run a full deploy or a full kind of check maybe, every maybe, so often. Maybe yeah. it would be nice to reach out to our Elastic friends um, because I know they work on the Jenkins observability. So. Yeah, and so right now the first step will be, well, as Garrett said, uh, checking the in, the existing monitoring on Azure, and see the breakdown between different clients and see which one is emitting bunch of peaks, and then from there we could go further. It was interesting to investigate on that. Maybe Damien, you will have to look at you. Yeah, yep. sounds interested. Anyone interested to pair with me is welcome from the team or from outside. Yep, Garrett, I continue. That sounds great. So one quick yeah. add-on. Uh, 
in the action I move on the action points, uh, the run box, I'm gonna um, polish the writing. The goal is to uh, write run box about, to, to fix uh, some elements that could have helped us yesterday during the incident. Um, the goal is we tried as much as possible to not wake up Olivier, who already had the knowledge from the previous one. So we partly failed and partly uh, and partly succeeded because team was able to provide a fallback solution. So I've identified at least two procedures that must be written at all costs. How to fall uh, what team and Mark did yesterday, how to, to have a temporarily fallback to be sure that user can still download file for one full day slower without the mirror capability, but still they can download. And how to identify and fix the Azure file storage. Identify we were able to follow Microsoft online procedure, but we were missing some point about a PowerShell script that Olivier mentioned earlier. This being uh, should be a run book. I mean, by run book, I mean a no brainer. Only the main dots we can still uh, do ourselves during an incident, the line between the dots, but we need, th there were some missing elements that could have helped and maybe could have helped the fixing without bothering Olivier. So now that we all have the knowledge and understanding of what happened, because since it happened already in November, that's the second time, that means we will have another issue with Azure file storage. So if we have a runbook for that, it's a no brainer, anyone from the team can uh, fix it. And that should also shrink the time of the issue. Sounds sounds perfect. And again, so, we'll put those those two run book in the Jenkins infra documentation repository. Is it worth one more action item to investigate or suggest or discuss ways to detect that style of failure? The the failure mode was was rather strange in terms of flapping and and you know it was on again, off again some some here some there i'm not sure that failure detection is is ultimately possible for that kind of failure but is it is it worth so yeah to, to be honest identifying the issue that happened yesterday is definitely challenging because as you says as you say um that was flapping um when we look at the monitoring Sometimes the check were passing, sometimes not. And even worse, um, we have 400 gigabytes of files. Some files were accessible, others not. And in November, those files were under the director plugins. This time, it was not necessarily the same. What do you think, so, Olivier, maybe uh, putting, uh, I, I don't know if it's technically possible, but the amount of file handle open on the Azure file storage were a pretty good indicator that something went wrong because it, it's the quota we we reached and once the quota was reached, then everything got out. So do you think it's possible to have a routine that hourly, that uh, measure at least the amount of open file handle on that specific volume? So if it reached, let's say it's 2000, so if it reached, let's say uh, 8,600, then we have an alert that say, okay, maybe you should check and with the run book with the process. So a human still have to operate, but the human would, would not have to go through the uh, which is the issue on the Kubernetes intrication. We know that the issue was specifically on the Azure file storage there. And so, not so, so, on first, the other services. So, so first thing first, everything is possible, uh, depending on how much time we want to invest in there. Um, okay. Practically, I'm not sure if it's worthwhile because Python, the checks are published to Datadog, they are written in Python. I, I don't have any documentation, so we could probably use the Python SDK for that. So, but those are definitely not information. I don't think those information are available um, as is in Datadog. And so, so we would definitely have to collect those and publish them to Datadog ourselves. Would, would you be, be okay, Olivia? I think there's some interest there. If I ask Datadog, do they already have a built-in monitor somewhere that would check Azure file storage issues because I would expect this to be a common thing they've already implemented and all we would need to do is find out how they what they did. Um, so we definitely have um, storage information. Uh, storage file counts. I have to do a check. I mean we have information okay. like the map egress ingress and stuff like that. 
Um, but we have the latency, but we don't have the information that, yeah, I have to look at. Okay, I have to thanks. Finish. So we are running out of time. Um, so I propose to finish the meeting here. But before we do, um, I just want to, to, to highlight the fact that because of the new workflow, we, we are going to have one document per meeting. Um, so I put the, uh, at the end of these documents, the link to the next week uh, meeting. So if you have anything you want to put to the agenda, uh, feel free to add um, that information there. Um, and so yeah, we use the, the next document next week. Thanks for your time. Um, have a good day. Bye-bye.